In today's video, I'm going to attempt to create a thriving mega city that has infrastructure, homes, and industry, all connected by one single and very large road. The rules for this challenge are simple. As the title suggests, my city must only have one road, which will be responsible for connecting everything within to the outside world. I'm also allowing myself to demolish, upgrade, or otherwise modify these roads whenever I feel the need arises. Next, I'm starting this challenge with a cool 200k in the bank. This will be used to begin construction on my very, very long city. Now, before we become city planners, first, we need to talk about some math. That's right, I'm a learning channel now. So take your seats and deal with it. Today's lesson revolves around this guy, Leonardo Fibonacci. Fibonacci was an Italian mathematician during the 12th century and is most famous for publishing the Liber Abaci, otherwise known as the Book of Calculations. You see, during this time, Europe was still largely reliant on the use of Roman numerals in commerce and scholarly pursuits. Enter Leonardo. Leonardo happened to be a part of a wealthy trading family, and as such had the opportunity to travel throughout the Middle East. This is where he became fascinated with Arabic notation, which is just fancy talk for the modern numbers 1 through 10. By publishing the Liber Abaki, Fibonacci became the first person to introduce modern notation to the Western world. Out of this book came a mathematical concept, aptly named the Fibonacci Sequence. The Fibonacci Sequence is a pattern of numbers where the given number is the sum of the two preceding numbers. So the sequence would go 0, 1, 1, 2, 3, 5, 8, 13, 21, 34, and so on into infinity. You get the point. Right, any questions? Uh, yeah, I have a question. What does this have to do with a city building game from eight years ago? I'm getting to that, so shut the fuck up. The Fibonacci sequence is integral to perfect design. How, I hear you ask? Enter the golden ratio. A golden ratio is present where the sum of two numbers, when divided by the greater number, becomes equal to the ratio of both numbers. Interestingly enough, all Fibonacci numbers, when tested against this formula, contain the golden ratio, the value of which is roughly 1.61. When this rule is applied as a growth factor, it forms the golden spiral. Now, I'll be honest, I don't fully understand it either, but that's not the point. The point is, this spiral can be found in many natural and man-made things that are considered beautiful. Examples would be sunflowers, famous works of art, Trump's side profile, and even our own Milky Way galaxy. This concept would be the foundation for my future metropolis, and so Spiral Town 1 was born. Once the outer skeleton was constructed, I got to work creating a small residential zone, a water supply, and a coal power plant, which I had diligently placed far enough away from my citizens as not to affect them too much. The first brave settlers of Spiral Town had soon arrived and would bring with them their culture their homes, their donut stores and industry. For the time being, all was well in Spiral Town. We were growing fast in fact, so some city planning was in order. The general idea was to have all of my residents live on the outer spiral. This is so they would be far, far away from the filthy, disgusting industry that I would place towards the centre of my city. Soon we had reached a population of 500 and I was able to take out a loan in order to lengthen my road even more. When I looked at it, it wasn't the beautiful spiral of a mathematician. In fact, it looked like a fucking four-year-old's crayon drawing. But it was our home. I was so caught up in expansion that I had failed to realise my citizens were crying out for help. Garbage was piling up in the streets. Children and small animals were lost under the piles of waste that consumed the suburbs. I had to act fast. A dump was constructed along the outer ring and garbage trucks were deployed in force to get the situation under control. A few people got sick and a few more straight up died. But this was the price of progress and it was all worth it. As soon after, Spiral Town was declared a worthy village. Demand for land was booming. Families were building houses and factories were churning out emissions at an incredible rate. But unknown to my loyal citizens, they were all in immediate danger. A quick review of Spiral Town's fire safety report revealed that no one was safe. And before I could react, homes and factories began to burst into flames. By the time I could afford a fire station, ashes were the only thing that had remained. 
Out of these ashes spawned crime. Criminals terrorized local businesses like Foul Oil and Game Nonstop. As mayor, I took the attack against Game Nonstop personally, and I promptly dispatched police to end the siege. However, due to the comically large size of the city, it took two weeks for help to arrive. I finally decided to address Spiral Town's housing crisis. I built nice houses along the river, and then some poor people houses, which would lay between the highway and industrial zone. However, as I am a selfless mayor, the poor people houses were also provided with a singular bounty house for entertainment. I was made aware at this point that most of my citizens were becoming unhappy. However, I couldn't tell. Was it the pollution? The rolling blackouts? The constant fires? The plague-like sickness? I decided to resolve the energy issue by placing an environmentally friendly wind farm in this guy's backyard. With a population of 2800, we were now a boom town, and in celebration of this, I built a brand new children's health center right next to the dump. I noticed that Spiral Town was really lacking in leisurely activities, and so it was written into law that every house must have a soda stand on the front lawn for maximum leisurely purposes. Not only that, I also commissioned the building of a cupcake. This would ensure that our children remained both happy, safe, and healthy. I zoomed out, took a look at what I had built, and for a while, I thought that things were going well. But the cracks in Spiral Town soon began to show. Firstly, we were broke. We were barely making enough money to be profitable. To solve the problem, I had to get greedy. Two toll booths were constructed on the highway. They existed for no reason other than to gouge travelers out of their money. I used this new revenue source to upgrade my power grid with a couple more windmills and coal plants. This, however, did not solve the electricity crisis. The power output was failing, and my coal-fired power plants were constantly running out of fuel. Because of this, literal human shit began to pile up in the streets, and my citizens began to abandon their homes en masse. Spiral Town had become a failed state, and I had failed my citizens. Spiral Town 2 rose from the ashes, but due to looking like a jelly bean, was also abandoned. Spiral Town 3 was no better than its predecessor and was also binned. So began the legend of Spiral Town 4. Our previous cities have walked so that Spiral Town 4 may run. As a lesson from our previous mistakes, Spiral Town 4 was going to follow what I called the pizza structure, where the industrial slice of our city would become a dirty, disgusting wasteland, while the residential slices would be protected and insulated from pollution by the commercial slices. In honour of me, Spiral Town's only road would be renamed Calcium Boulevard. This should also serve as a reminder to drink your milk and like the video. Thanks to our prior knowledge, we managed to get Spiral Town 4 up and running quite easily. So far, there had been no catastrophic fires, no pestilences, and no blackouts, and we were growing. We even had the money to decorate the shoreline with a fancy quay. K? Key? Key? How, however the fuck you meant to say it, who cares? To curb unhappiness, I constructed the world's most inaccessible playground and installed some car parks, because apparently, they're fun. In my pride, however, I had once again forgotten to build a fire station. This ultimately led to the destruction of the only elementary school in town, along with all those inside. To avoid another tragedy such as this, smoke detectors became mandatory for all citizens of Spiral Town. This policy stood for three days until it nearly sent my city bankrupt and therefore was quickly removed. But hey, it's the thought that counts. My next project was energy generation. I had recently unlocked advanced turbines, which could generate energy from the flow of the nearby river. My eventual goal was to construct a hydroelectric dam, but for the time being, this was the best that I could do. As Spiral Town surpassed 5,000 citizens, the need for public services rose dramatically. Not wanting a repeat of the elementary school disaster of 2023, I was forced to place a fire station on every ring of the spiral. As an added precaution, I spent most of the city's money on a really cool fire helicopter depot. This turned out to be a $55,000 mistake, as although the fire helicopters look cool, they don't actually seem to do much, and after a quick Google search, it turns out that they're only really meant to be used in the event of forest fires. This was helpful information that would have been nice to know before a second elementary school went up in flames. Regardless of the clear and present danger to the lives of children, housing was still a hot commodity in Spiral Town, and as more citizens moved in, a bigger, better, more flammable high school was built. Despite having 11 fire stations, the city continued to burn. The rubbish dumps were also filling up. As I had not yet unlocked the incinerator, the issue would only get worse. Instead of solving the problems at hand, I thought, fuck it, it's too hard. 
the easiest solution was to place birthday cakes and bouncy houses everywhere. This would distract the population and increase happiness. This band-aid solution was clearly effective as we were soon declared a big town. Happiness rose and this milestone allowed us to build underground metro stations. This opened up a world of possibility for Spiral Town. The plan was to build three stations. These stations would connect residential areas to industrial zones. In theory, this would allow my citizens to travel between these areas easily and encourage more workers in hard to reach areas. Unfortunately, what really happened was that I spent tens of thousands of dollars on a metro system that fucking nine people used. Although this was an undeniable failure, I hadn't given up on public transportation yet. I vowed to revisit it later. For the meantime, Spiral Town was becoming overcrowded and in desperate need of expansion. I had purchased a new area of land across the river. I then constructed a tunnel that would connect our new development to the centre of Spiral Town. While this was happening, we had hit a population of 12,000. This gave us an opportunity to build an entirely new network of public transport. I then began the construction of the Spiral Town 4 monorail system which sat above the entirety of Calcium Boulevard. The purpose of the monorail was to provide fast access to various parts of the city. This, however, was also a failure. The extravagant costs of Spiral Town's pathetic public transport network came at the expense of other services, which meant that the city had quickly descended into a depressing dystopia. Sickness was rampant, crime out of control, and despite my best efforts, everything was still on fire. Looking around, it became obvious Spiral Town was kind of a shitty place. It was time to branch out into something new, something exciting, something squiggly. The new world across the river was proclaimed to be Squiggleville, and although Squiggleville could never be as mathematically perfect as Spiral Town, it was an opportunity for a new, more squiggly way of living. The vibe for Squiggleville was upscale and classy. Before long, the streets were lined with luxury apartments and high density shopping districts. There was even room for fancy parks, imported trees, and to top it off, a poo lake. I then spent some time renaming different people, places, and objects in my city after you guys. So keep a lookout for your name. Our population swelled to over 20,000 and citizens rejoiced at the achievements of me, their god, and the glorious lifestyle which I had provided them. Unfortunately, their perfect lives had made them content and lazy and unwilling to work. As why work when you live here? The greatest and most mathematically perfect city in existence. And so, much like a god, Milky's giveth and Milky's taketh away. 